Once long ago, a beautiful church stood on a high hill in a great city. When lighted up for a special festival, it could be seen for miles around. And yet, there is something even more remarkable about this church than its beauty, the strange and wonderful legend of the bells. At the corner of a church was a tall gray tower, and at the top of the tower, so the people said, was a chime of the most beautiful bells in the world. But the fact was that no one had heard the bells for many years, not even on Christmas. For it was the custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring to the church their offerings to the Christ child. And there had been a time when a very unusual offering laid on the altar brought glorious music from the chimes far up in the tower. Some said that the angels set them swinging, but lately no offering had been great enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Now, a few miles from the city, in a small village, lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother, Pablo. They knew very little about the Christmas chimes, but they had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and decided to go see the beautiful celebration. The day before Christmas was bitterly cold, with a hard right crust on the ground. Pedro and Pablo started out early in the afternoon. Despite the cold, they reached the edge of the city by nightfall. They were about to enter one of the great gates when Pedro saw something dark laying on the snow near their path. It was a poor woman who had fallen just outside the city, too sick and tired to get in where she might have found shelter. Pedro tried to arouse her, but she was barely conscious. It's no use, Pablo. We'll have to go alone. Without you, cried Pablo. Pedro nodded slowly. This woman will freeze to death if no one cares for her. Everyone has probably gone to the church by now, but when you come back, be sure to bring someone to help her. I will stay here to try and keep her from freezing. But I can't leave you, cried Pablo. Both of us need not miss the surface, said Pedro. You must hear and see everything twice. Once for you and once for me. I'm sure the Christ child knows how much I would love to worship him. And if you get a chance, take this silver piece of mine. And when no one is looking, take, lay it down for my offering. Reluctantly, little brother hurried off into the city, while Pedro winked hard to keep back the tears of disappointment. The great church was a brilliant place that night. It had never looked so beautiful. When the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the wall shook with sound. At the close of the service came the procession with the offerings to be laid down on the altar. Some brought jewels, some heavy baskets of gold, and last of all walked the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. A great murmur went through the church as the king took from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and laid it on the altar. Surely, everyone said, we will hear the bells now. But the cold wind was all that they heard in the tower. The procession was over and the choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly the organist stopped playing. The singing ceased. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church. As all the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly but distinctly the sound of the chimes in the tower. So far away, and yet so clear, the music seemed so much sweeter than anything they heard before. They all stood up together and looked at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bells. But all they saw was the little figure of Pablo who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and laid Pe Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. 